Do you want a hippopotamus for Christmas? Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 15 of the Christmas Craft Countdown where I'm sharing a brand new Christmas craft every day for 20 days. Today's project is based off of that song. You probably guessed that from how I opened this video. You can have your very own hippopotamus for Christmas in this layered SVG. The design is free to download for the next 24 hours. So let's find out how to get it and how to make him. If you haven't already registered your free ticket for the Christmas Craft Countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash CCC to do so. Once registered, check for an email from me with subject line Christmas Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you've been sent throughout this countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down the page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you have missed some, check out the instant access bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash CCC bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Christmas Craft Countdown. All downloads come in zip folders. You need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, open up Cricut Design Space and start a new project. Go into Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find the files on your computer or drag and drop them in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the folder and then the file to upload is the one which starts SVG in the file name. I'll click and drag that in and it should look like this with all of the layers one on top of the other. If yours looks different and you can see the layers next to each other instead, that means you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file type. So if that's the case, click cancel down here on the bottom and then try again and make sure you choose the one which starts SVG. This is looking good, so let's press upload. And then when it's in your recent uploads, click on it to get the green border and then press add to canvas. Here is my little hippopotamus. And I thought I'd just quickly show you how you can change the present if you don't want to cut it in pink. So look down your layers until you find the two present layers. I've got my bottom one here, which looks like a pink rectangle. And then you can change the colors in here to whatever you want. So maybe we'll do a blue one. And then the one on top of that, let's do a darker blue. We've also got the tissue paper inside the box. You need to scroll down to find that one. It's the very bottom layer. And I might make this that same blue. You can also change the ribbon color again by looking in the layers until you see those purple ones and then change it. So maybe we've got a gold ribbon on here. And then let's look up and find the other ones. And this is two shades. So I'm going to see this is my darker one and then that one is also the darker one and then for the lighter one that looks good there so that's just a really quick and easy way to customize the colors if you didn't want to cut that gift in pink however i am going to do it exactly as the design came so let's undo all of those changes there and then let's resize him by clicking on him. Make sure the padlock icon is closed. If it's open, then click on it to close it. And I will do mine at 7.5 inches wide. Press enter on the keyboard and the height should change in proportion. When you're happy with how he is looking, press make it and then it will separate everything out into the different colors. You can change the paper size over here and you do need to do this for every single color. You can use the rotate buttons um, to move things about and I like to press shift so that I can rotate it exactly 90 degrees and then drag it to the top and it just takes up less space that way. So I've got all of this bit of the card that will be left to use on a different project another day. 
And if I change this one, you see, depending on the size of the card I was using, I might just want to change the positioning of things to make sure I use as little amount of card as possible. When you're happy with how everything's looking, press continue to connect to your Cricut machine, get everything cut out from cardstock, and then we will stick our wonderful Christmas hippopotamus together. Here is my happy little hippopotamus all cut out. That was a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> I've laid all of the layers one on top of the other to check I'm happy with the colours and that I haven't missed anything out. We'll be sticking this together with a combination of glue and 3D foam pads. The glue I like to use is called Kalal. I really like it because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some other glues can do. And to make sure we can put it in all these tiny bits of card, I put it in these needle tip applicator bottles. These have really thin nozzles on them, which means I can get the glue everywhere I need it to go really easily. The foam squares I'm using are from Dot and Dab. I'll cut them in half as they are a little bit big, but any kind of foam squares, foam dots, foam tape, any of that will be absolutely fine. As with all my layered designs, we're gonna start at the bottom and work upwards. So I'm gonna move all these layers apart. I'll try and keep them in a kind of vague order of where they need to go. Just because I've already gone to all that effort of putting everything in place, I don't want to ruin it all. Now, one thing I have already done just before we get started is I have glued the two little rosy cheeks um, to the front of the hippo already, just because I thought I was probably going to lose them otherwise as they're quite small. Um, but everything else is still waiting to be cut. The very bottom piece is this pink one and we've got two little bits of that purple ribbon which will go on first and these will get glued on. So one by one I'll just turn them upside down and a little bit of glue and stick them into place. You can tell where they go because the little um, edges of that ribbon, they line up against the outline of that pink piece. Yeah, that was nice and easy to get started with. The next piece is this black one, which is gonna make up the mittens. And for this one, we'll use our 3D foam pads to give it some depth from the bottom piece. I've cut mine in half, and um, that just means I don't need to use as many. And because they're smaller, it's actually easier to, um, get it into all of the little places I want it to go. I'm having a little bit of trouble with this particular pack where my bottom bit isn't coming off quite as well as it should. I don't normally have that trouble, so I think it's just a, a bit of a dodgy pack of them. But it just means it's gonna take me a little bit longer than normal to get these on. So you want to put a good amount of your foam around the edges of the design and also in all of the sticky out bits like the hat and the gloves. But as well as this, you also need to make sure there's some in the middle. And that's because otherwise, if there's nothing in the middle to give it stability, this card is going to dome downwards like that in the middle of the design. And you won't get as good a 3D effect and it just won't look as good overall. So it's definitely worth putting those extra few pieces in the middle. When you've added all your foam, it's time to peel the tops off to release all of the stickiness underneath. Now that's done, I can bring it back in. And I'm gonna line this up using the bottom bit that's nice and straight, but also keep in mind the hat as well. So both of those can be used. And I'm gonna gently drop it down. And the reason for that is that if it wasn't quite lined up right, I can pick it up and move it without damaging anything because it's not actually stuck yet. But that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna push down to seal all of those foam squares on. The next piece to add is this one to make up the red of the hat and the body. And this one is gonna be a, um, a glue layer because we've already got the depth of the mittens and um, we'll be adding more depth with the other layers on top so we can get away with gluing this one. Which means this one is going to be nice and quick. Next, we've got the little white pieces to go on. 
This is probably hard to see because it's white bits on uh, my white background. And actually that was still off shot, even though I was trying to move it in the shot. Oh dear. All of these will be done with our foam. So I'm gonna just double check I've got that the right way round because I've dropped them a couple of times trying to pick them up. But that looks correct. It's always best to line up the pieces. Just place them over it to make sure you've got them the right way round before you put the foam on rather than having to risk doing it wrong um, and then potentially having to recut. I've done that so many times where I've put the glue on the wrong bit and it's always really annoying. <laughs> okay, I've got the little bit on the hat. Gonna cheat on that one and put my foam straight on there rather than fiddle about with this tiny little circle. And then finally, there is the little bit on his hat. Gonna put a couple of foam squares on this one. I'm just thinking actually the foam on his hat is going to have to be glued because it's covered over by the next layer. So take that bit of foam off and instead I'll glue it. Otherwise his poor little ears won't fit. Right, there's that one. And remember, you've got the assembly guide to refer back to to show you which layers to glue and which ones to stick. Next, we've got the face. And um, before we stick this on, we're going to fill in those eyes and ears. Turn it upside down. And then you've got a black circle and two little ear pieces. And we're going to glue these to this back of the hippo face. Start with the ears. Just add a tiny bit of glue to the ear shapes and then turn the bits of pink upside down and remember we're working in reverse to make sure you get them around the right way and just glue them over and you can turn it round just to make sure you've not overlapped it anywhere but that one's looking good and then for the eyes again I'm just going to add a little bit of glue around there and stick this over it. And when you turn it over, you see that's gonna fill in those details. This is another foam square layer. So while that's glue's drying, I'll start the foam squares along the bottom. I think that's glued enough now. Um, glued enough? Dried enough now that I can add my foam to it without it moving. One more there, and then I can peel those tops off to get all the sticky. Oh, my glue is still a little bit wet because that wiggled when I went to peel the top off. Let's just check it's still where it's meant to be. It is. <laughs> I should have waited a little bit longer, but never mind. Okay, stick this one on. There. So now you can see why we had to glue that white bit. Otherwise that would have been taller than everything else. So this wouldn't have led um, straight. Next we've got his nose and I'm going to foam this one again to give it a bit of dimension. If you haven't already, then you can stick on the little pieces of the cheeks. This one can then go on top. It's really easy to line these up because of that bottom of the present. I like it when a design is easy. <laughs> All right, next is the gift. And again, because this wants to look like the hippo is inside it jumping out, we're gonna add our foam squares onto the back of this one. That sticks on there. 
And we're getting to the end now. We've got the stripy pattern on the gift, which will be a glue layer. Nice, easy one to glue as well, because there's lots of straight lines. And they're not that thin either. <laughs> I don't want to push down too hard on this because I don't want the glue to smush out of those um, diagonal lines and be visible on my other pink. So I'm just very gently putting that into place and when it dries it will seal itself nicely. Next we've got the um, two bits of the ribbon and these are both glue layers. So I'll start with this bigger piece. is right on there and then the next bit of the ribbon is the lighter shade which is creating that cross perfect and then finally the little bow start with the bottom piece the bigger one and this one will give it some foam too so that it pops out from the ribbon, oops, throwing things about now. <laughs> Just make sure you line it up in the right place, following these layers underneath. And our very last piece is the top of the bow, which will be glued like that. Put the lid on my glue whilst I remember. And there we have it, our super cute little hippopotamus is all ready for Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a layered hippopotamus for Christmas. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more cricket and Christmas crafts. I hope to see you again tomorrow for day 16 of the Christmas Craft Countdown. Thank you for watching. Bye.